Hello, hello, and welcome again. This channel is called Al Tzadu. Al Tzadu is a old Saxon word that means old customs. This channel is all about the old ways of the Germanic peoples. And this is video four in our Gods and Goddesses series on Frigg, wife of Odin. So let's discuss Frigg and let's break down her name in the various Germanic languages. So in the various Old Norse languages, she's spelled Frigg with two G's. In Old English, she is Frigg with one G. In Old Saxon, she is Fri, F-R-I. Old High German as Freya. We have an example of this in the second Merseburg charm. And there are some scholars who believe this is a little closer to the Low German side than the High German side, which I'll get into later in the video. We also have a Langobardic reference as Freya. Now, all these words, they stem from the Proto-Germanic feminine noun Frio, meaning free. Now, Freya is not attested outside of Scandinavia, but Frigg is attested outside of Scandinavia. Frigg is a goddess attested to all the Germanic peoples, and Freya is, we only have word occurrences of her in the written, um, the literary evidence. Um, we only have Scandinavian attestations. So, Let's dig down a little bit further. Now, while Germanic tribes certainly moved westward over time, and they even moved into England, which is named after a Germanic tribe of the Angles, um, these are the areas of Germanic lands where Frigg was worshipped, and as the Germanic tribes migrated, Frigg went with them. Now, I brought up Freya earlier because there is a very well-known Frigg and Freya origin hypothesis. Many, many, many scholars, and I don't consider myself a scholar, I would say I'm a lay scholar maybe, um, but uh, many PhD university scholars believe that Frigg and Freya have common origins. Uh, many of them believe that Freya is only known in Scandinavia and many believe that Freya grew out of Frigg. And, uh, you know, this has caused a lot of debate, but this is common, and um, I don't know how well known it is in heathen circles. But, for example, Stephen Grundy states, the problem of whether Frigg or Freya may have been a single goddess originally is a difficult one, made more so by the scantiness of pre-Viking Age references to Germanic goddesses and the diverse quality of the sources. The best that can be done is to survey the arguments for and against their identity and to see how well each can be supported. Now, here is a basic breakdown of Frigg and Freya. So, for example, Frigg is married to Odin, and Freya is married to Other. Now, Odin and Other, they come from the Proto-Germanic word meaning mad. Now, Dr. Jackson Crawford has a video on Frigg and Freya, and he, in it, he's one of the scholars that believes that Freya grew out of Frigg. And uh, in his video, he says, and I'm quoting him, he says, I will eat my hat, and he takes his hat off and he shows his hat and he says, and this is a nice hat if Other and Odin are not the same. And he has the same opinion about Frigg and Freya. For example, Dr. Crawford in his video mentions that half the dead go to Folkvanger, Freya's Folkvanger, and the other half of the dead go to Odin's Valhalla, which to Dr. Crawford, not only are these linguistic, these names are tied linguistically, but you know this implies to him that Odin and Frigg are married and therefore Freya has in a sense you know grew out of Frigg and has taken over for her. And I actually agree with Dr. Crawford. Um, I Because he's not a heathen um, sometimes I disagree with him. He doesn't have a hat as he puts it or a horse as he puts it in the race of being a heathen. So when he discusses holidays um, you know, he's not looking at it from a heathen. Um, so 
But overall, I agree with Dr. Crawford that Freya grew out of Frigg. Now, the English weekday name Friday, ulti ultimately meaning Frigg's Day, bears Frigg's name. This is not Freya's day, this is Frigg's day. And a lot of people, you know, seem to not understand this today. Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure why. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, well, see, this is proof that the heathens had a seven-day week because we have some day names named after Germanic gods, which, of course, is not true. Um, a short tangent, the Greco-Roman gods associated with the classical planets were rendered in their interpretatio Germanica at some point during the late Roman Empire, yielding the Germanic tradition of names based on indigenous deities. Hence, in Christian England, Mars Day and Aries Day was equated with Tu, and Mercury for the fourth day of the week was equated with Woden or Odin. Jupiter or Zeus was out of the fifth day of the week, and the Germanic cognate was Thor. Same with the sixth day of the week, Venus being equated with Frigg, wife of Odin. So basically, in a nutshell, a seven-day week is uh, Middle Eastern in origin. It is not Roman in origin, nor is it European in origin. And over time, as Rome's influence grew and Christianity's influence grew, in particular, um, a seven-day period of time, um, in a belief that there's a one true God who created the world in six days and rested on the seventh, um, became the religion of the people of all of Europe, not just the Germanic and Scandinavian peoples, but all of Europe. So originally the heathens did not have a seven day week. So Frigg, as most heathens know, she is married to Odin and her father is called Fjorgen. She is the goddess of motherhood. She is the mother of Baldr, Holder, and Hermod. Now, let's discuss some historical sources. So we have Freya. I mentioned before, um, Dr. Scott T. Schell believes Freya is actually closer to Old Saxon than Old High German. So there is some debate among some PhD scholars as is Freya uh, a longer form or another Old Saxon form for Frigg. Um, but in the second Merseburg charm, and Merseburg is a city on the eastern border between Saxony and Thuringia. Um, the Thuringians were definitely a high Germanic people um, and the Saxons were low Germanic people. But uh, this is a border region and also it could be, um, you know, as in a sense, the Germanic language is kept evolving so that, you know, Old Saxon was evolving into Middle Saxon and, you know, High German was evolving into Middle High German. But uh, the second Merseburg charm says, Fole and Woden were riding to the woods and the foot of Baldur's foal was sprained. So Synthnut, soon his sister conjured it and Freya, Vala's sister conjured it and Woden conjured it as well as he could. Like bone sprain, so blood sprain, so joint sprain, bone to bone, blood to blood, joints to joint, so that they may be connected or glued. So the second Merseburg charm is a healing charm, and in it we have a Old Saxon, or some argue Old High German name for Frigg, which is Freya. Now, where did Frigg dwell? Well, Fenhall, or Fensaler, is attested in the Elder Edda, or the Poetic Edda, and the Younger Edda, or the Prose Edda, which was written by Snorri. So, for example, in Voluspa, which Voluspa means Volva's Spey, it says, while in Fensaler, or Fenhall, Frigg wept bitterly for Valhall's need. In Gilfagening, then said Ganglery, which are you, Asenjur? Har said, Frigg is the foremost. She has the estate, which is called Fensaler, and it is most glorious. In Skald Skarpamal, which is a prose poem, um, Frigg, queen of the Aesir and the Asinur, a fulla and falcon form, and Fensaler. So the dwelling of Frigg is Fensaler, and I do not hear much about Fenhall um, as a heathen today. We hear about Valhalla all the time. 
um, but we do not hear about other various halls of the other Germanic deities, and Frigg's Hall is Fenhall. And, uh, you know, if we were to go back to the Frigg and Freya hypothesis, you know, Freya um, has Folkvanger, and Frigg has Fensaler, so some people, of course, bring this up in the origin hypothesis. Um, and, you know, one thing I didn't mention earlier, but I imagine I'll mention it again in the video, that both Frigg and Freya, they have many things in common. One of them are feather coats, flying feather coats of falcon feathers. So what is a fen hall? Um, so as I stated before, fensaler is attested in both Eddas. Um, Wikipedia's definition of a fen is a type of peat accumulating wetland fed by mineral rich ground or surface water. So here is a picture of a fen in Estonia. Now some fens are not as watery as this fen. So if you were to look up online in various online encyclopedias, you're going to see some a little less marshy and some a little more marshy. Now, I just want to bring up, we do have Heaven Wanga attested in Old Saxon sources and very similar words attested in Old English sources. So um, there being a Heaven Meadow, you know, there are meadows and springs and, and rivers um, sacred groves. There are many um, natural places that are held in high esteem by heathens. And here, you know, is a goddess that has a hall that is known for being in a fen. So is Fen Hall a hall built at a fen in Asgard? Um, you know, um, we know that uh, the sources state that Fen Salar is glorious. Um, but we don't have a lot of description in the sources of it. Now, I mentioned before that uh, the Prozetta Skarskalpermal, 18 through 19 states, that Frigg had a feather coat. And this is Frigg, not Freya. And obviously, Freya also has a feather coat. Um, but there is a passage in the Old Saxon Halion, which is written around 830 of the Common Era, and it mentions a feather shirt. So there's an angel flying in a feather shirt. Now this is obviously a change to the biblical gospel. You know, the whole point of the Haliond is to convert the Saxons to be Christians. And the Haliond is a very heathenized gospel to try to dumb down the gospel story, which the Saxons were unfamiliar with, so that they'd understand it. Of course, it's a very common belief um, amongst Christians that angels had wings. I don't wish to give a biblical exposition on this, but I could um, because I do have a master's degree in biblical studies and archaeology. But, um, you know, uh, um, there are various spiritual beings in scripture with various different Hebrew and Greek names that there are, you know, spiritual beings with wings. So, you know, some people will argue that there is a reference to Free's feather coat in the gospel, and other people will say, well, this is just a Christian angel wearing a feather shirt. But, um, you know, uh, a shirt of falcon feathers is certainly something that Frigg and Freya owned. So what, is this an old Saxon reference to Frigg or even her feather coat? Um, some people would say yes, and other people would argue no. But nonetheless, it is pretty interesting that we do have um, in the 9th century a reference to a feather coat in Old Saxon. So I gave the very basics of Frigg today in this video. I mentioned the origin hypothesis. Um, you know, my blog site, um, I have the same um, in my blog at altsadu.com backslash blog. Um, I have a lot more references, um, a lot more detailed stories of Frigg than I have in this short video, um, but uh, you can look that up in the blog um, where I go into a little bit greater detail of some of the stories of Frigg. Um, please join us on the Facebook group Out to Do Saxon Heathenry, and please, of course, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening today, and, you know, sorry I took a month off. Um, life got kind of crazy, and um, I'll try to get back to a video once a week, but sometimes I, I just don't have the time. I'll do the best I can. Thank you for your patience, everyone.